Birds are some of the most visible victims of the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. Thousands of affected birds, both live and dead, have been recovered on or near beaches like this one on West Ship Island, Mississippi. Some are obviously oiled. Others, like this laughing gull, must await a necropsy to see if oil is to blame for its death. Uh, unfortunately, most of the birds that die are never seen by humans, and so the toll is still untold. Around 1,500 oiled birds have been rescued so far from across the Gulf region. Of those, volunteers have successfully cleaned and released around 500 animals. But some experts worry after effects of the spill could claim other winged victims that will be visiting the Gulf region on their annual migrations. The Gulf Coast is, is really the center of a Western Hemisphere migration system. And so we calculate that, that probably a billion birds will fly by the Gulf of Mexico this fall. The migration of hundreds of millions of birds began in July and continues through December. Some birds will spend the winter here, while others are on their way to points farther south. One of the birds that's coming down is the piping plover, and that's definitely an endangered species, a bird we're very concerned about, and it patrols the edge of the beaches. Uh, so right where every high tide, you know, the oil comes in. There's a lot of other birds, uh, some birds we call common birds in decline. And so they're not really endangered, they're not on any threatened species list, but they're in decline. There's a lot of other stresses on bird populations. And adding an oil spill is really just adding insult to injury. So the earliest migrants are sandpipers and plovers. There's birds like semi-palmated sandpiper, western sandpiper, greater yellow legs, lesser yellow legs. There's 20 different species and more of sandpipers. And these are birds that are uh, feeding in sand flats and mud flats, and so very exposed to this oil. As the season moves on, we switch over and uh, some of the earliest ducks start arriving, like the blue-winged teal. And uh, it, it's a marsh bird, so it's going to be in those marshes, many of which are very heavily oiled. And as the fall goes on, uh, some of the other ducks come in. And lesser scop is a duck that's just really, really common in the Gulf. And it's going to try to dive in the waters that are oiled uh, to try to find food at the bottom of the Gulf uh, near the beaches and, and the marshes. The Gulf wetlands and shores offer vital habitat for birds that winter in the region and the area is a bountiful stopping point with forage for birds flying much farther south. And Butcher says there's another, less obvious problem with this oil spill. But what we worry about in this oil spill, so much of that oil has been dispersed and, and really sent to the bottom of the Gulf. And we fear the impact on the, the whole web of life in the Gulf. And uh, people are, love the web of life of the Gulf because it produces the fish and the shrimp and the oysters that we love to eat. In the same way, that's what the birds are eating, but if this web of life is destroyed by the oil uh, that's sunk to the bottom of the Gulf, then there'll be birds out there without enough food to eat. Louisiana, arguably the state hardest hit by this spill, is home to about 40% of the country's wetlands. A favorite bird habitat is Grand Isle, Louisiana, where State Department of Wildlife and Fisheries officials are keeping a watch. The biggest worry is the amount of oil out there and where it may end up. Uh, when these birds come here to feed and utilize that habitat uh, and, and the resources that they depend on for food, um, you know, how is that going to translate into, um, you know, contamination through ingestion or, or direct exposure? Carlos has spent most of his life in Louisiana's prime habitat, and he worries it may be a slow recovery. How long will these impacts be around? You know, you, a lot of people compare it to Exxon Valdez, you know, over 20 years now that they, you know, can still find impacts. Um, although this is a different system, you know, warmer and a lot more open water, hopefully we won't have those same impacts for, for a long period of time. So government and private groups are working to restore habitat from short-term flooding of fallow farmland to longer-term projects like rebuilding barrier islands replanting forage, and restoring natural flow and sedimentation from rivers. If you build it, they'll come kind of thing. I mean, it's, it can be that simple. It doesn't mean they're all going to come, and it doesn't mean you're going to stop all of them from going where they want to go along this Louisiana and, and the Gulf Coast. But you can probably reduce those impacts by providing them additional habitat. Experts will be watching closely throughout the coming years to track the oil's impact and try to help both local and migratory birds.